Good morning, and welcome to Life Song. If you're visiting with us, grab a connection card out of the seat back pocket in front of you and go ahead and fill that out, making sure to let us know how we can pray for you this week. To read all about our events, classes, or to register for anything you read about, scan the QR code and that will take you to all you need to know. There you'll also find a way to give your tithes and offerings in our Secure Give tab. Or in just a few minutes as a part of our time of worship, you can come forward anytime and give. It's an exciting day to be here at LifeSong today, so let's get started. Stand to your feet and we'll put a minute on the clock as you greet those around you. We're so glad you're here today. Good morning, church. I hope everybody's having a good morning so far. If you are new here, I would like to personally welcome you uh, to this service this morning. Uh, real quick, we have these two black baskets up at the front. As we enter into our time of worship, these uh, baskets up here are for giving your tithes and offerings. And so as we go into this time of worship, I want us to kind of set the tone. I want us to prepare our hearts that way, when we worship, we're not distracted. We're not worried about anything going on. It's just us and God. So if you don't mind, let's go ahead and bow our heads and let's just prepare our hearts for worship this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to just be here in your presence this morning. Lord, I pray for every person that's in this room right now and every person that will be, Lord, that our hearts would not be distracted, Lord, that we would be tuned to you and your voice. Lord, I pray that this morning that, that our worship pleases you. Lord, and I just pray that this morning we would just sing the loudest praise that we can to you. Jesus, we love you so much, and we pray this. All in your name, amen. amen. Just go before the Lord today. Just expect it for the Holy Spirit to move in our hearts and in this place. Would you lift your voice? Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stay When everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's never let me down He's faithful through generations So I today. He's a God who has never failed and never will. Cause I've still got joy in chaos. Come on. I've got peace that makes no sense. So I won't be
just be still right now and let the Lord fight your battles. He's a faithful God. Break came when blue, my house was built on. Thank you, Jesus. I'm saved. That's the truth today you can cling to. Rain came when blue my eyes was built on you. I'm safe with you. I'm gonna make it through. When the rain comes, rain came when blue my eyes was built on you.
stories all around the room of your goodness, of your faithfulness. Just around this room, if you've had a story of God's goodness, will you just slip your hand up? His faithfulness. I just want you to look around a room and see the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, the stories that he writes. He's a good God, amen? We could go on and on all day long just sharing about how good he's been to us, how he's carried us through every mountain, every valley. We'd be here all day, all week. But as we worship this morning, I just don't want us to miss this fact that God is still good. And that even if you don't realize it, even if you didn't have your hand up, he has been good to you. There are stories that he's written and that he's writing in your life. And sometimes it just takes this heavenly awareness, this spiritual awareness for us to ask God, open my eyes to your goodness to see how you've been working around me all throughout my life. Lord, open our eyes. Open our eyes, God, to your goodness. Sing that out if he's been good to you. All my life you have been faithful. Every step. All my life you have been so. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will see of the good man. God. Your goodness is running after me. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Thank you, Lord. Church, sing that again. Your goodness. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. Yes, it is, Lord. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. I lay my life down. With my life laid down. I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness.
today. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. You can have all this world. Just give. and only thing that matters to us above all else just in
God, and that you would bring life and healing. God, we are praying for Harper right now, Lord. We are asking for you to remove this cancer out of her body. It's not too hard for you to do, God. There are others who have come and they have things that's going on, Lord, that they need you to show your face. Lord, as you have time and time again. Lord, we pray, Jesus, that you would do a miracle. God, we belong to you, Lord, and we are just the sheep of your, we're just the flock, Lord, but you're our shepherd. And so lead us, God, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray this and all God's people agreement say, amen. Amen. Friends, there's two kind of praying we can do. We can do praying that is um, benign. Praying that really just is, um, let's just go through the formality. Or we can touch the heart of God in heaven. And um, to do that, it requires for us to have faith. And... um, The Bible, when you study it, it, faith is just such a critical factor in living this Christian life. It's impossible for us to to really see um, God do what it is that he wants to do unless we have great faith, you know? So I just challenge you in that. Don't pray just to pray, but pray with faith. You know, and if you have a small faith, just ask God to give you a greater faith. If you will, will you take your Bible? Turn over to Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to be read verses 1 and 2 this morning. We're going to talk about um, God being an enduring God. What exactly does that mean? What does it mean for God to be an enduring God? And what does it mean for us to be an enduring people? It says in Hebrews chapter 12, beginning in verse 1, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance. So that word that's there, I want you to underline that word, endurance. The race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, you see that word again, endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want to ask you a question this morning, and if you take notes, and I encourage you each week to bring your Bible and to bring a journal. And the purpose of your journal is not to take the notes that you see on the screen, but is to write down the things that God speaks to you. Because we have a tendency to come into an environment like this, and God speaks to us, and then we think we're never going to forget what God is saying to us, but we do. We, we walk out of somewhere, we forget. And so we just want to write down, jot down, text to ourselves, whatever it is that God is speaking to us. You know, but I want to begin by asking you this question, and I think it's important. It says, it's a question I ask myself, and I've asked myself for a long time. 
And um, ever since the last 32 years of being a Christian, it's um, can I or can we run this race of life and make it to the end honoring God? I want you to think about that for a moment. Can I, can we, can you run this race of life that we're in and make it all the way to the end and honor God? Now, that is, um, that is, the, that is the, uh, the goal that is set out before us. To be faithful, honor God today and for the rest of our life. You think about Jesus, um, and we think about the example of Jesus, but I just want you to just listen to this, and if you just want to close your eyes and just, just for a moment, just contemplate all that Jesus endured and all that he went through um, in the short, just, you know, um, young man that he was before he was crucified. Um, when he began his ministry, Jesus was tempted by the devil for 40 days in the wilderness, but yet he endured. When his family didn't understand what he was doing and thought that he was crazy, Jesus endured. When his early followers also misunderstood him, he endured. When those followers of his beginning began to fall away one right after another and no longer followed him, he endured. When those Pharisees told their lies about him, he endured. When the Sadducees con, um, convened in order to, in, to entrap him, he endured. When Judas betrayed him for 30 measly pieces of silver, he endured. When he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and his sweat was like great drops of blood as he pled with the Father facing the cross the next day, he endured. As the temple guard came and arrested him in the garden, he endured. As he went through the mocking and the suffering, six illegal trials, all that night and even in early into the next day, he endured. As he watched Peter cursing him and denying him that he ever knew him, he endured through that. Heard the crowds crying out, crucify, crucify him, crucify him. He could have called 10,000 angels, but yet he endured. As he experienced the trial before Pilate and saw Pilate wash his hands and give him over He endured. When the soldiers mocked him and spat upon him and slapped him with their hands and they said, prophesy who hit you, he endured. When they thrust a crown of thorns upon his brow and he was in excruciating pain, he endured. When the Roman soldier raised his chain of horrors called a cat of nine tails, and filleted the flesh on his black back. He endured when he carried the cross outside of the city gate. He endured as they laid upon him the cross of Calvary, and they nailed spikes into his hands and his feet, and lifted him up between heaven and earth to die as a common criminal in shame. He endured as the two thieves who were crucified with him flung their Accusations at him, he endured. As the crowd yelled out to him to come down if you're the Messiah, he endured. As Satan came against him with all the forces of hell on the cross, he endured through it. As God himself turned away from him, Jesus endured. Jesus endured all the way to death, and he cried out, it is finished. 
is paid in full. You know, we, we think about this life of Christ and we think about all that he went through in such a short period of time. And I don't know what it speaks to you, but what it speaks to me is um, it, it shows me how much, um, how much love and strength and um, just passion that he had and belief that he had. And, and he, it, it, what a tremendous example for us to be able to, to lay our life there and say, if Jesus went through all of this, then we too can walk faithfully for the rest of our life honoring God. And so here um, in Hebrews, it's, it's giving this example of this long distance race, this, this life that we're on, this journey that we're on, you know, and it's crying out to us, let's not walk, but let's run. Let's run this race that we've been given, this race that we have only one lifetime to run the race. There, there are no do-overs. You know, oftentimes the thing that drives me, even when I don't feel good, of just wanting to get up and to continue to press forward is the fact that I know that I'm not going to get back yesterday. Uh, all the time, the hours, the minutes, you know, and maybe when you're young, you really don't think about that, but the older that you get, the realization that you have limited time becomes that reality that you only have a certain amount of days to live on this earth. And so the cry to us is to run this race. We have only one lifetime to run. But this race that, we, that is set out before us that we are um, called to run is not a race that we set out before ourselves. We didn't mark out the course that we're supposed to run. Someone else did that for us. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. The, mo the Lord has marked out the course for us to run. And so in, in essence, what, is, what the rea reality of it is, is that God made all of us with an incredible purpose. That purpose that we have is associated with his kingdom come, his will be done. Every single human being that is on the face of this earth has been created in the image of God and for God to have a relationship with him, to honor him, and to live out his will for them. When we know that the struggle of what it is that we're facing is this fallen nature that we have, this sinful nature is battling against the spirit. The flesh is fighting against the spirit. You know, and so we, we find ourselves in the midst of this, this, um, this race that we're running, and, and it's a constant battle. There's a mental battle, there's a physical battle, there's a, a spiritual battle, an emotional battle. I mean, all of us are ingrained and tied up in all of these different facets of this journey, there, this race that we're living. But yet the purpose, and when we think about it and the clarity of that, is that there is one God, there's one Savior in Jesus Christ, there, he's the only way that we can have an intimacy with God through a broken relationship, through his death, burial, and resurrection, his shed blood, we can have forgiveness of sin, our relationship with God can be restored, and we can live out the purpose God made, has created us for. So friends, as a part of this, there's got to be some acknowledgement on our part that endurance is going to be a part of this journey. In other words, um, it's not going to be easy. It's, it's a struggle. It's going to be difficult. But there's also victory. It's not just that there is this um, hapless um, life that we have to live full of struggle and difficulty and woe is me and it's going to always be this way. But yet there is victory in Christ and there is victory in living for Jesus Christ. And there is also victory in being an overcomer in Christ. And there is also victory that is for eternity. And, and so if you think about this and we put these two things together, we have one lifetime and when, in, in which we want to win the victories, but we have the rest of eternity to celebrate the victories. So we, 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 we live with that kind of focus or that kind of purpose of realizing that right now is the opportunity that we have to win the victories. 
And forever and ever and ever, the rest of eternity, we'll celebrate all that happens now. Listen to what it says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. It says, for you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. Do you hear that? Do you hear that, that just rhetorical, celebrating perspective of that? I mean, we have this great need of go to this of, of endurance, of, of, of a thought process that is undeterred by what happens here on this earth. Because we know that God has something greater prepared. Here's the second thing. The race of a lifetime is a journey of seasons. This life that we're living, this journey that we're on, it is a lifetime of different seasons. Just like we have seasons of summer, spring, winter, and fall, we also have seasons of life that come. Sometimes it can be like what we're experiencing now where we have all four seasons in one day. Anybody else been there before? Where you go to the highest of highs, and then you're at the lowest of lows in a short period of time. We need to already go ahead and prepare in our minds that this life that we're on is not static. It's not like we're going to walk at one level, but there are going to be times where we're up on the spiritual mountaintops, and we're down in the deepest valleys. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 says, Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due, due season, while doing good, for in due, due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. That verse has always been a tremendous encouragement to me. That no matter what comes, be consistent. No matter what happens, keep your eyes focused. So you think about this um, word that is here that we see, um, this word race. And interesting enough that, that when you look at this English word, this borrowed from this Greek word, it literally translates race. It actually the author says this, let us run with agony. That's the literal translation. Let us run with agony. agony. So anyone who, anybody here ever do any long distance running? You know, we got a few people that's done some long distance running. As you can tell, I'm not really that guy. Like I'm much more built for the short sprint collision than I am the long distance thing, but now I've tried. I've, I've, I've literally tried, we, we used to do a 5K, you know, and I know that that's kind of a weenie distance, but you know, I, I, I've, I've, I've tried to do a 5K before, and, and I'm just like everybody else. So, you know, I get down, I'm real jovial, and I'm at the beginning of the race, I'm cracking jokes, you know, I'm out there I'm stretching and doing all these things, you know, and, and everything is great, and I get started running, and I'm right there with the pack. Man, I'm just right there. You know, and we're all running, running, running good, you know, but then all of a sudden, you know, there's, there's some people that start kind of distancing themselves, and eventually something starts happening to your body. You start hurting. <laughs> you know, start hurting from the, the top of your, your head down to the sole of your feet, you know, and, and, and there's agony that's in the race, you know, until eventually what ends up happening to people like me is that you get slower and slower and slower until you finally convince yourself that um, it's okay to walk. <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't going to quit. I mean, I'm not going to quit, you know, and have the bus come around and pick me up, you know, because that would be highly embarrassing, you know, unless I got a cramp, I couldn't do it anymore. And then it'd be okay. But, but I'm just going to keep walking, and then, and then I'm going to start running a little while, and then I'm going to start 
walking some more, and then I'm going to start running a little while. You know, friends, I just want to say to you, you know, the overachievers that are out there, those people who run that 5K, you know, and you're the you're the fin- you're at the finish line, and no one you look around you, nobody's within a great distance, you know. And you, you look to run the race. It doesn't matter how fast you run it. See, the race that we're on, you know, we 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 discipline ourselves. We we want to become um, spiritually fit. We want to become those people who have high endurance. Um, it, but the thing is, is that we want to develop the mindset first and foremost is that we're never going to quit. Uh, friends, I have been a pastor for 25 years. I have seen so many people put their hand to the plow, get excited about walking with the Lord, become gung-ho about spiritual things and stand in this very room and lift their hands up and sing and pray and, you know, study their Bible and then all of a sudden quit. Because they go or they were in one season and something happened and they shift to another season, you know, and that season was a season of agony and so they just quit. And, and, and here we are, and all of us who are in this room that realize this very thing that we're talking about, it, 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 you know, the critical part of us or the self-righteous part of us could say, you know what, man, shame on them. Shame on them. They should have known better. They shouldn't have done that. Like, we could become highly critical, especially when we find it easier for us to keep going. But the truth is, is that all of us, if you run the race, realize that we run through different seasons and we need to be that great cloud of witnesses that are there. We, we don't look to the great cro- cloud of witnesses, you know, b- because they're cheering us on. We look to see the testimony of the great cloud of witnesses. We see the life that they lived. We see the faithfulness that they had. We see how they endured to the very end. And so we we look to that as an example to say, listen, if they can do it, then I can do it. And so you and I need to be the cheerleaders of people, just like that great crowd crowd of witnesses that are there, the speaking from death of the life that they've lived in faith, now we can become those people who are cheerleading those around us on to never quit or give up. Friends, you might have some people in your life right now that are far, far from God. They might be atheists. They might be people who, don't, who have not an ounce of faith, but do not give up on them. Because it ain't over till the final breath. And it ain't over. You might not, listen, you might pray for somebody, you might invest in somebody, and they might not even come to Christ while you are, you're alive. But it might be after you're already gone that one of your children who is rebellious and wayward find their way back to Jesus. Jesus. But I always say that everybody does what they do for a reason, you know, and that's true. We all do what we, we're all products and we do what we do for a reason. Jesus is just a better reason. He's just a bigger reason. When Jesus becomes our all in all and he becomes the example, then a lot of the things that are reasons why we do what we do could get washed away in the greatness of who he is. Because this race is not just categorized by agony and difficulty and struggle, but it's also characterized by progress. We are making progress. Whether you like to see it or not, it might not be big progress, it might be slow progress, but it's progress nonetheless. If you take, if you think about it, if you take one step back and two steps forward, you're still in progress, right? Here, here's the third thing um, about this passage from Hebrews is that a lifelong pursuit of Jesus is possible 
it is possible. But you got to be steady. You have to be encouraged. And you have to run light and free. You have to run light and free. (laughs) What does the scripture say that we read out of Hebrews? It says, set aside, lay aside, take off all the encumbrances, all the weights that are weighing you down, all the things that are slowing you down. Take those things off. You know, um, I think about it like this. This dead man who is dead in their sins and trespasses, you know, it's a heavy load to carry. Uh, A heavy load of sin, um, it is, um, it will weigh you down. Guilt and shame will, it will burden you to the point of exhaustion. But Jesus said, I came that you might be free, right? If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Yeah, so, so if Jesus Christ came to set us free, then, then we could take all of the encumbrances and the weight of sin, and we can lay those things down on him. We, we can put all that heavy weight on him, right? And, and he says, take my yoke upon you. Like, put your burden and your yoke on me, and take my yoke because it's light. Don't let your past continue to be the albatross that keeps weighing you down and slowing you down in the race. Because that is what Jesus Christ came to die for on the cross. He came to set us free so that we could run this race light and free. But here's what we like to do. We, this, is, this is very common. We like to, to, to ask Jesus to, to forgive us and to save us, and, and we place that sin you know, down at his feet. But we have, this, um, we have this thing where we like to take up that old man back in our, and put him back on. You know, because the enemy wants to constantly remind us that we're worthless and no good and we'll never be anything and we're just a, a, a failure and we're, um, we're not valued, nobody cares, nobody's watching. We're just, um, we're just existing, he wants us to believe that because it allows for him to get into that mental part of our life that, that slows us down and that picks things back up and carries them around. Listen, friends, let's take that old dead man of sin and shame and guilt off once and for all. And, and let's run light and free. You say, well, I'm still encumbered by my own sin. I'm still making choices and decisions that are tangling my feet up and it's causing me to relive and be um, like tied up in that. Friends, that is a, that is, um, a decision that you need to make. You know, it's a decision that you and I need to make, and and here's what I mean in that. Here's the secret. Here's the secret of endurance. The secret of endurance is focusing on the inner man, not the outer man. The secret of living this life, honoring God to the very end, is not to focus on the season of life that you're in, not to focus on the outer stuff that is going on, but to focus on the inner man. Focus on the spiritual and not the physical. The secret is to look to the future and not the present. To take your eyes off present pain and look to future glory. It's to be consumed with what is invisible, not what is visible. To give your life to what will never perish versus that which will perish. Place the unseen far above the seen. The future far above the present. The spiritual far above the physical. In correlation, the dying of the outer man is the growth and maturity of the inner man. I want you to think about that statement for a second. I want you to write that down somewhere. The death of the outer man is in direct correlation to the growth and maturity of the inner man. 
Have you ever, um, any of you here ever experienced the loss of a loved one who went through a long, drawn out illness? Um, you, you, you can, you can kind of see it happening, um, and I've, I've seen it over um, many, many, many examples. That this, the outward body is perishing, but the inner person, like the spiritual person, is growing stronger, stronger, stronger. The outward, it would seem like we're, we're looking at the temporal. We see the body that is sick. We see the cancer that is consuming, but yet there, there's a focus, and the, here's, here's the shift. Here's the shift that you hear people say, I'm so tired. I'm so tired, I'm ready to meet the Lord. Do you see the, did you see the shift that is happening this there? When you focus on the outer, you would think, well, why don't you want to get better? Why don't you, you want your body to get better? You know, but the shift their focus is, is that as the outward man perishes, the inner man is being strengthened and renewed. So we think about this in terms of what John the Baptist says and what really has been our theme for this entire year, which is John 3.30, which is I must become less and he must become more. In other words, the outward person needs to perish. We must die to ourselves so that he can truly live in us. So, so we don't want to focus our attention on the outward person, the physical that is there, but we want to focus our attention on what's happening in our heart, what's happening in our relationship with God. See, that is the, that is the very secret of endurance. So we think about this. Listen to what it says in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5. He says, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who he has been given to us. Do you, do you see that? If you, if you study or you look at that passage, what he's talking about there is he's talking about the exchange from the outer perspective to the inward, where God is taking through the power of his Holy Spirit and he's changing us from the inside out. He's pouring in, he's pouring life into us. He's transforming us. He, we're thinking different. We're acting different. God's, our behavior is different. Our priorities are different. Everything about us changes when Jesus becomes preeminent. We become less and then he becomes more. And the more Jesus is preeminent in our life, the more the outer man dies. Now, I, I'm not talking about physical death, but I'm talking about the struggle, the battle, the war that is there, the fleshly battle. So this, um, this life, we talk about this lifelong pursuit of Jesus, it is possible, but we have to set our minds and our hearts on this inner man. We got to be steady. I've oftentimes said this, but it's um, true. Um, it's, it's, this is absolutely 110% true. There's a good chance that today I would not be standing on this stage leading up to right after we finished building this building and got in here in 2012 till about 2016. Because in 2012, in January of that year when I woke up, something happened to me that I never had happened before. It, I woke up and I felt a hint of a downturn in my spirit. And what I mean by that is, is I didn't know what it was. I didn't identify what it was, but I was, I was depressed. I couldn't put a finger on it. I didn't know why. There was nothing. I, we, I'd gone through a season where we had built this building. It was a lot. Um, you know, I was working um, several jobs. I was pastoring the church. We started over there. We were doing five services. I was doing, you know, um, two Saturday night services, three Sunday morning services while we were building this building. Like, we were just burning, 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 you know. A lot of it was not in the spirit. A lot of it was in the flesh, admittedly. You know, I, I, was, I, was, I felt very um, responsible, 
You know, and so, and, 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 and I was walking with the Lord, but I was not, I didn't have enough life experience and maturity to know how to really cast that upon the Lord. So I took a lot of it on my own shoulders. What it led me to was burnout. So in 2012, I woke up, I thought I needed a vacation. So I went on a vacation. I came back, I was fine for a few months, and then it came back again until eventually. And here's the thing, is that as I'm standing here right now, I'm, I was preaching all of that time, nobody even knew it. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell my wife. I didn't tell, I didn't tell anyone. And, and because I, I really had the mentality of um, what really one guy said to me. He said, man, what's wrong with you? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Get your mind right. That's what he told me. You know, and I was that guy because I remember whenever I was playing football in college, like I was the guy that would get in people's faces and I would say that same thing to them. The only difference is, is when you get to where I was at, you can't fix it. As hard as you want to try to fix it, you can't. You don't know why you're feeling the way you're feeling. And so I, I, I battled on through that for four years. So in um, coming into the end of 2015... Um, into 2016, and I can't remember the exact timeline on that, but I woke up one day and I clear as a bell heard the enemy say to me, do something to disqualify yourself and you will never have to worry about this ever again. Um, and thankfully, throughout all of that, I never stopped having a quiet time. I did, you know, when we talk about steadiness, I can look back and see that the fact that I had a quiet time, even though I was struggling, was a difference maker. Because it was in that moment where the devil was tempting me, that it was also in that more moment that the Holy Spirit said to me, Jeff, now's time you have to tell someone. So here was the choice. Here was the decision I needed to make was I'm going to follow through with disqualifying myself out of ministry so I would never have to worry about this again and go about my merry way, or was I going to fight? Was I'm going to go tell someone? Now, here's the thing. It's just like you and we sit here and we think about when we reveal our vulnerabilities and we reveal our weaknesses, how are people going to respond? You know, because it's not a, when you're, when you're a, you know, a, a, a strong person and you're very driven and you've got A-type personality, you're, you're not very willing to admit you have a lot of weaknesses because you can beat anybody. Like you want to fight, you know? But when you, when you realize that you're not strong like that, and so I went, to, um, I went to my wife and I told her what was going on. And, I, and when I revealed that to her, I didn't know what she was going to do. But you know what she did? She said, what do we need to do? What, how can I help you? I love you. I'm with you. I'm for you. I've been in this thing with you from the get-go. I'm never going to stop. I'm going to be by your side through it. I came to the church, and um, I met with our elder team, and I told them what was going on. And, um, and I'll be honest with you in that is that as I told the elders, there was a couple of the guys that were kind of more along the lines of, hey, get better, do better, you know, and um, it really ticked me off. Like I got angry, you know, and so we had an, another meeting that next day and we got everything straightened out, but it was this, they said to me, was what we're, look, don't misunderstand what we're saying. We want to encourage you. We thought we were encouraging you in this, but we want you to know we got your back. What do we need to do to help you? So uh, then um, uh, we have a board of trustees that oversees me, and that, those guys are, it, the way it works here in that is, is that the, our board of trustees, for the life of me in this position, they remain our trustees so that I can develop a relationship with them. They can have a relationship with me. And so their, their, their job is to oversee me, to correct me, rebuke me, to encourage me. They handle everything about me in regard to this church. And so when I went and shared this with them to a man, all of them said, we, we are for you. We believe this is where you're supposed to be. What can we do? to help you and support you. You, you, you got to understand something, friends. What I'm sharing with you right now is so important to people who are sitting here right now because you're not, you, you don't have to be the person who is the strongest person in the room. 
You, you don't have to be the person that carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. You, you don't have to be the person that is all things to all people. That's who Jesus is. Jesus is all things to all people. He, he is our strength. He is the one that carries us. And so I'm just sitting here telling you right now that like as strong as I thought that I was and as, as much as I thought that I could carry in my humanity, I can't and neither can you. But yet it was God who redeemed out of that. Can I tell you this? Is that the ministry after 2016 that has happened here at Life Song Church has been the best years of ministry in my life? It, I carried so much burden all the way up to that point. But when I decided that I was no longer going to perform, that I was no longer going to try to be the person who had to, to prove themselves, that I just started just, just doing what God called me to do in freedom. I'm going to tell you something that might surprise you, but I have no idea how many people come up on this campus from week to week. I don't want to know. Because it doesn't matter. I mean, there, were, there are so many things that I've just simply let go of for the fact of saying this, is that this race that we're in, and if we're going to make it to the end honoring God, we've got to be steady. We've got to keep walking with Jesus, and we've got to be encouraged. And friends, I am more encouraged. God is changing me. To this day, as I stand here right now, God is changing me. God is changing our staff. God is changing this church. And I, I, am, I have never been more excited to see what God is doing with a body than I am right now. And this message this morning is really a catalytic moment in that because for those of us who are sitting here, we're in a lot of different spots. There are people who walked in this door this morning that you didn't know whether you, you took a shot coming this morning. You've just been hanging on my thread. Your faith has been, you, you've been challenged, but there's, there's a, and, and all across the spectrum, from those hanging on by a string to those who are just solid, rock solid, steady in walking with the Lord. That's what makes this an incredible body of Christ because it takes all of us who are sitting here in this room, no matter where we are or what season of life that we're in, it takes all of us to be those people who are cheering one another on. You know, there's a story. Um, it's back in 1983. There was this guy. It was in Australia. They, they, um, they hosted this ultra marathon. It literally was 573 miles. I want you to think about that for a moment. 573 miles. And so as they're registering for this race, there were a lot of people that came. Most of them were all were professionals who were used to long-distance running, you know. And so they had all their garb on. They had all their, their sponsorships. They had all of the things that, that, you know, you have to have, they thought, to be successful. But yet there was this one dude. His name was Cliff Young, 61 years old. He was a, um, a sheep herder. He came up there wearing overhauls and goulashes. And so when he walks up to the table and he tells them that he wants to register, they made fun of him. They told him and said, this is a, this is a, you know what you're about to get into? Like, this is a professional race here. It's 573 miles. Like, you can't, you can't run this in overhauls and, and boots and goulashes. He, and, and through all of that, he decided, no, I, I still want to do it. And so he, he registered, and just like with everyone else, he, he began the race. Now, now, here's what generally would happen is all the professionals would run about 12 hours and um, then they would stop and sleep for about three or four and then they would get up and they would start um, the running again. But Cliff, um, he, he did something different. He, um, he never stopped. Now, see, he, the thing is, is that he didn't run, but he walked. And he walked and he walked, and he walked, and he lived off of pumpkin juice. 
and just some rations. So when it came uh, to the end of the race, this is the results. He finished the race in five days and 14 hours. The closest person to him finished nine hours and 56 minutes behind him. He became a legend. That this sheep herder, Cliff Young, 61 years old, beat all the professionals in this ultra marathon. When I read that story, it just absolutely encourages me. Like it, it undergirds me, it strengthens me to know that it is possible to make it to the end of this life and honor God. And the way that we have to do that is we have to, run the, we have to run the race that God has marked out for us. We, we, we've got to understand, it's his purposes and it's his plan. There are seasons of life that are going to come. There's difficulties that are going to come. The good and the bad. The joy and the pain. But regardless of what comes, we still need to lay aside all of the things that are encumbering us and keep on walking even if we're surviving on pumpkin juice and just a handful of rations. Never quit. Never let go of that plow. Listen, I'm going to ask you, if you will, would you just, you just bow your head? I want to just, I want to offer an encouragement this morning. Jesus, there are people who are sitting in this room right now that if you were to ask them, are they going to make it in their walk with you through this week? They're so beaten down and discouraged that they don't know. They just need to be reminded today, God, that you carry the burden, and they cannot let go. They cannot let go of walking with you, of talking with you, sharing life with you. They need to be encouraged. Lord, and I would say, Lord, let us be an encouragement to them. But Lord Jesus, would you just let your Holy Spirit come and strengthen their inner man and woman right now? Lord, let them know the truth of your word that says you'll never leave us or forsake us. God, I pray for those who right now, they're in the middle of a spiritual journey where they they, they don't have a relationship with you. They're, they have spiritual questions. They're trying to figure it out, but yet they haven't stepped across that line yet. So, Lord Jesus, I pray that this morning that there are, there, are, there are men and women and boys and girls that are sitting here that this morning they need to step across that line and they te- take that step of faith. where they cry out to you and simply say to you, Jesus, I need you. I know that I'm a sinner, Lord. I know that I, I've done wrong and I do wrong. Lord, I believe that you died for me. You shed your blood for me on the cross. Lord, I ask that you come into my heart and forgive me and save me. Lord, I surrender myself to you. God, at this moment of intersection in their life, God, I pray that you would remind them, Lord, that you are the one that in that moment of surrender, that you take all of our sin and you cast it as far as the east is from the west. Lord, and you remember it no more. 
Lord, but that we are washed in your blood and we're made brand new. God, and for the very first time, we breathe life, spiritual life. Lord, and now it is this journey of faith, this race that we're talking about this morning that we begin to run once we make that decision. So Lord, just in this moment, God, let us all just take a very deep breath. Breathe in life. Lord, and know that you are with us. And we can finish this race and honor you for the rest of our life. I'm going to invite you, if you will, to stand to your feet. We're going to sing this last song. I'm going to be standing here at the front. This altar is open. I invite you to come as we sing. Thank you. 
this morning. Listen, if there's one thing that you can take away with you as you go on throughout your week from today, it's that the secret to endurance is focusing on the inner man, right? Not the outer, right? It's focusing on the spiritual side of things, not the physical circumstances of your life right now. It's not about focusing on the present pain, but instead it's about focusing on that future glory that we get to give to Jesus Christ. And so with that being said, behind me, you're gonna see a QR code pop up on the screen. You can scan that code and that code will give you information to every single thing that we got going on here at Lifesong. And the last thing is that in two weeks, which is the 28th, we'll be having Connected Class. If you wanna go ahead and get signed up for that, make sure that you do so. Other than that, y'all have a great rest of your week. Go be missionaries where you live, work, and play.